Hey dude, yeah. <laughs> welcome to the Dice Tower. They put me in the middle. Alright. Hey folks, we're really glad to have you with us today. Um, we're doing a top 10 list that I think will argue over less than normal. You think so? It's possible? No, I, I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's such a positive way of looking at things. No, I don't know. It'll be it's established, man. I don't, think it's, I don't think it'll be very heated, but I think it's going to be a little like, yeah, I disagree. It's sort part, of that's part of our motif. Okay. Well, anyhow, what we're talking about today is what makes a game good for us. What makes a game enjoyable for us? We've already talked about things that irritate for us. For us. Makes it good for us. Not necessarily for you. You already took a lot of heat calling your audience. Uh, I know. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah, so... A fellow teacher said, you used the S word to me today, because I said stupid. On the video? No. Oh, oh, oh. No, I, I, I... I'm never sure what the S word is. Is it shut up or is it stupid? Well, it was funny because I said, I said something was stupid. I don't even remember what it was. And then uh, a student that was playing out in the yard said the word suck. And I said, no, that's the S word. And the teacher laughed. The kid didn't know what I was talking about, though. All right! Cool. Let's get to the list. A glimpse into my head. Anecdotes by Healy. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. All right. So anyway, but yes, these are the things that, that I look for in a game, or uh, these are things that I like about a game, because a lot of times when we talk about games, people are like, well, you know, you need to define what you're looking for in a game. Okay. We're going to, right now, define yeah. what we're looking for in a game. Maybe a little bit silly. A little bit. Maybe. No, not really. For me, it's just... Maybe a little stuck up. <laughs> For me, it's things that when I, you know, pop open the box and I find find out that thing is in it, I'm like, oh, cool. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Well, let's do a number so, ten and see if we're on so, the same so, page. So we've we, we've 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 decided, silly, stuck up, just keeping it real. Keeping it real. Army of one over here. <laughs> let's go. Here we go. Number ten. All right, my number ten is yellow player pieces. I like playing yellow <laughs> when I pop open that box and I find out, hey, yo, I can be yellow. But isn't that like almost every game? No, no not really. Not really. You yeah. know, and then if there happens to be another yellow player, that's, that's, oh, you know, that's when if they get yellow, I'll be moving their pieces the entire night. Just because I'm so used to playing that color. I don't I don't look for a player I like playing green. I don't look for a player color, but I get what you're saying. You're you're like you open the bot, you don't it's not a purchasing point. It's sure. A, it's not a purchasing <laughs> point. No, yeah. It doesn't have green, never. You know? No, no, okay. Shots played. <laughs> so yeah, I, I get that. I, yeah, I, I can like see it. it. I like it when it has yellow, I find out it has yellow, I'm like, cool, I'll be yellow. Cool. That is all my right. number ten. Yeah, but we play, I don't even bother. I give all the green to Sam, all the yellow to Z, and then I get whatever's left over. That's right. Which is usually pink or purple. Woo! Alright, what's your number ten? Alright, my number ten is resource management. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I like resource management. Uh, I like uh, having my stuff and being able to do stuff with it. Now, uh, it, realize it's number 10. Uh, so this is like squeaking in. Right. Um, so it's, it's not a huge thing for me. If it doesn't have resource management, that's fine. But if it does, okay, that's, that's a mechanic that I can grasp onto. That's the thing, something that I can understand right off the bat. And it helps me like the game better. Now, it doesn't, make me, it doesn't mean that I'll like the game beyond the shadow of a doubt. Uh, it just means that, okay, I'm understanding a little bit better what's going on, so I like it. All right. Cool. My number 10 is a beautiful board. I like good cards, and I like cool pieces and stuff, but I'll tell you, a board that looks cool. I really like Michael Menzel's boards. Mm -hmm. the, I, I, because sometimes I'm waiting for some people to take their turns, and... Um, you know, so I have nothing to do. Yeah, so true. I'm like, Sam, move. But while I'm moving, he, you know, he, can, I can look at the board and look at all the little people running around and working on the castle. Look at that move, Kyle. No, that's a... Okay, you laugh at that, but that, to me, makes the game really cool. 
I mean, yes, I would like cards to look cool, but the game board brings it all together. And there's a lot of really ugly, boring boards out there. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Michael Menzel owns a collection of tiny little brushes. The smallest of brushes, where he makes tiny little cows and sheep and a little dude carrying a stick. This isn't working. Yeah, <laughs> this isn't working. Beautiful he's not, board. He does that in almost every board, too. That's the thing, which is cool. I do like his stuff, too. But everything, like somewhere off in a hidden corner, is like... There's a cat in this boy, you know what I mean? There's like weird stuff. <laughs> now, like at Agricola, you know, I don't know, he, I don't know if he did Agricola, but no, I like that. His. I like that same thing where you turn on one of the tiles, you look, and there's people playing a board game in one of the yeah. pictures. That's yeah. A, yeah. that's a cool thing to me, and I like that sort of thing. Do you anyway. do you have to mention Agricola in every list that we do? Oh, <coughs> it's it's it might show. My number nine. Wow. Show. And then. <laughs> wow. All right, let's Man. move on. My number nine, roll selection. I love it when I have a deck of cards that I can choose from. Um, uh, there was a pirate theme game that did this here recently. Can you remember the name of it? It's called uh, Dread Curse or no? Um, yeah, Dread Curse had it. You know it. what it's called? And um, then there was the other one. Uh, Citadels, Mission Red Planet. Yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of them Dread out there. Dread Curse it is. Dread Curse it is. There you go. But uh, that's the most recent incarnation of this. Mission Red Planet is a game that I have kept on my shelf mm -hmm. simply because I enjoy this mechanic. Uh, Citadels, one of the first role selection games that I that uh, kind of introduced me to the whole mechanic, the whole idea of being able to choose the person you want to be that round. So uh, it's just a it's it's a mechanic that I've I've always enjoyed, and I'm going to continue to enjoy. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Roll selection. Cool. Yeah, it's a cool thing. I. It's something that I very much like in games too. Um, although they made my top ten. All right. My number nine. <laughs> Surprises. I love them. You. That doesn't that, surprise me that, anymore. I know. Was I was, you're always moment. hooting like an that insane was, clown. That, that was. So. A, that was a. That was a you moment. Yes, yeah, it was definitely. There was less banging on the table than usual, yeah. but. That's true. It was a you. I've done that. I've done that kind of. Yeah, I, I yeah. guess, but no. okay. Surprises. Surprises. No, I like a game where you can pull off some sort of surprise in the game. Like a surprise move. Right. A surprise move. A surprise strategy. Something where you're like, "Whoa! I didn't see that coming." Like for example, they always show these in movies. They show where the guy's like they're doing chess. And he's like, chuk, chuk, chuk. he's like, "Oh!" And out of nowhere, he surprises somebody. Right. But the really good chess players are like seeing all that stuff ahead of time. Right. Sure. But I like a game where you can be like, you thought, you know, you walked into an ambush or, mm. yes, boom, I got you. Somehow, something where you can, you can really just surprise the other players. I've always enjoyed that about a game. Something right. where people are like, what? Even a game where there's a traitor. When the person reveals and you're like, it was you. <laughs> you know, that, that whole yeah, aspect right. where they surprise you. I just... I like that in the game because that keeps the game fresh and it keeps you on your toes the whole game. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of games, you know, for example, you're playing a, a, a resource management game. You guys said you liked it. But you play resource management. Many times you get to the end and there's no surprises left. Right. It's all going to play out. I you know like, who's going to win. I like secret tiles because I like at the end where someone goes, boom, 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 boom. I won mm -hmm. type thing. And I think that's a cool feature to a game. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I agree. I agree. I like that too. Aha moments. I call them aha moments in games. Mm. If a game has aha moments, I, I, I like that a lot. So that's my number nine surprise. Aha cool. moments usually make me want to punch somebody in the throat. <laughs> aha! Especially if I'm the one. Yeah. Especially if I'm the one winning, and some guy goes, "Aha! I beat you." <laughs> We're going to make a top ten list. Top ten throat punching. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My number nine is linen finish cards. Cards that have a nice, gorgeous linen finish. German linen finish. None of that Chinese stuff. Oh, oh so sumptuous. Shuffling a deck of linen finish cards is a, is a marvelous experience. I love it. Mm -hmm. mm. Dealing them and they just glide over to you. And you say I'm weird for rubbing a felt table. 
you can you can spread open the brand new pack and sniff them. They just <laughs> smell like okay. No, no. Listen, I do understand the the. When you throw a card to someone that slides all across the table, I like that. That's nice. Okay, that is a pretty cool feeling. It's even cooler, man, to like throw it at him and have it hit him like right in the chest and you're like... In the throat. It's right there. In, no, not in the throat. Oh. Not trying to hurt people. Yeah. So again, my number nine, nice linen finished cards. It just it, it just makes the game a little bit better. That's all. We're only going to get better from here on out. Hopefully. Hi, hi, hi. Eight. All right, this one is, I, I kind of debated where to put this on the list because not all my favorite games have this, but it's something I certainly like, and that is dice chucking. Mm -hmm. I love throwing dice. It, you know, and if a game has you throw dice, but you only do it once or twice, I'm talking about, I love throwing dice. I am not a big Warhammer 40,000 fan anymore. Right. You know, I, I like playing it, but I don't play as much, but I'll tell you this. Sometimes you roll 30 dice in that game, and there's just something about throwing 30 dice. I like throwing dice down dice towers, obviously. My orc boys are about to attack your space marines. Hey, let me get my bag of dice here and I mean, shake but, it out on the table. But that's one of the reasons I like, like King of Tokyo so much. I love rolling those dice every turn. I like re-rolling dice because some people, there's some people out there, and this is, I'm not going to call you stupid, but... There are people out there who act very snooty about dice. They're like, how can you like such a randomizer thing? You know. You're stupid if you're like that. <laughs> Stop saying that! I'm sorry! <laughs> I'm, I mean, if you're gonna be, look, look if you're gonna be it's snooty so about watching. something like that, oh, I don't like dice game. Okay, because oh, no, okay. I quite don't... frankly, the, it's so random, and I'd rather have every bit of control over what I do in my game. <laughs> Okay, but I don't know that people are necessarily saying that. Okay, look, I don't mean you're actually Certainly not stupid. In that accent. As in, <laughs> true. Oh no. <Lord. laughs> I'm not saying that you're stupid. As in, you you lack intelligence. I just think that's a stupid attitude to have. Okay, but I get that people don't like dice. Okay. And I get that some people are tired of dice because there's some games that just randomly use dice for no reason at all. Then don't play those games. Okay, I don't look down upon the mechanic for it. All right, well, thanks. Sam's got my back. I do. But what I'm just saying is I like throwing dice. So that's my number eight. Dice! All right. My number eight is a theme that encourages role play. Role play, okay, getting into the vibe. And by that, I mean a fun pirate game that 10 minutes in has you make <laughs> you and talking like a pirate. A vast um, yeah, walk that plank. A space game that 10 minutes in has you making laser sounds and making Star Wars references and acting goofy. Yeah. That, a theme that encourages you to role play. I love that in a game. Well, let me and ask you this though, uh, because I think we mentioned this on the top annoying mechanics for a game. I said I don't like games that make you act stupid for the purpose of acting stupid. No, I don't mean no, 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 games no, no. Not, where yeah. one of the mechanics is role play. I hate that. <laughs> I really do. He's I not... mean games with a theme that encourage you to get into the vibe and be like, har, har, har. Kind, kind I'm of like coming for your blunder. Kind of like yeah. every time we play Shadows, we always crack Monty Python jokes. That. Yes. That that's what I don't he's know that I've about. ever played a game of Shadows over Camelot with anybody in in history where a Monty Python joke can right. happen. Right, right, right. Exactly. So that, the game encourages that, or at least it allows you to engage in that, you know? Yeah. So that, for me, thumbs up, number eight, game that encourages role-playing. Cool. All right. All right, my number eight, drafting mechanics. I love oh, drafting what mechanics. Did you think of that one. Uh, I love games. I don't know what it is. Um, it can take, uh, in my opinion, it can take a mediocre game and make it a game that I actually want to purchase and I want to have on my shelf because there's just something about it of taking those cards, picking it, putting it aside, and then getting something else. Mm -hmm. I like that. Oh, drafting's a good me mechanic. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I especially like even some games that don't normally have drafting, and then the designer goes back and adds drafting to the setup. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Okay. That because normally you get a random hand, but right. at drafting just as a setup at the at the beginning of the yeah. game, even that can take a game to That's like a cool. whole other level. Mm -hmm. you know One game I mean? that really does that well is Agricola. <laughs> the throat. Go Ready? For the throat. <laughs> Number seven. All right, for my number seven. 
And this may appear in some form on Sam's list, I don't know. But for my number seven is, I like three-dimensional pieces. I like, don't get me wrong, I love cards, I love tiles, but I love 3D. Star Wars Queen's Gambit is a 3D game yeah. when you set it up. I That's love cool. miniatures. I love, but I mean, I love wooden components too. I'm just four. You know, if... <laughs> That's a 3D game. Don't even look at me. Keep going. Don't even look at me like that. You know it's a 3D game. Anyhow, I see it right over there. You do right not. There the show. It is not there. He is but, lying. Okay, but yeah, but listen. You're a toaster. <laughs> get it, get it. Is he oh upset? my. Is he going games a lot? Wow, look, look at this. this. Okay, I don't know. I haven't played this game yet, okay? <laughs> it's called Elbow. But it comes with these chunky three-dimensional eggs. I like it already. I, I This... This game, I, I read the rules already, I think could be played with tiles. Right. This makes it better for me. Anything with the three-dimensional things, you know, it, whether they're little wooden stand-up... I mean, meeples. The first time I saw meeples, I mean, they're kind of everywhere now. Yes. Right. But the first time I saw meeples, I thought that was a cool thing. A little wooden guy was better than a disc. The mm. same thing could have been done with a disc or a thing. I love three-dimensional pieces, and the more you can add to a game, the more I like it. So my number seven is 3D... Pieces. Awesome. Okay. That's an awesome choice. Yeah, I have to do <laughs> next four. <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> All right. I'm going to piggyback on one of Tom's previous selections yes. and say good artwork. I'm going to make it a little bit more general, though. Not just the board. I'm talking cards that have good artwork. For the first incarnation of Ascension, I hated Ascension mm. simply because it looked like a high schooler. Not saying that high schoolers aren't good artists. I've seen a lot of them that are. But it looked like somebody drew the artwork for the cards on a piece of notebook paper and then just scanned it into a computer and then put it on the card. I'm sorry. Don't make me spend $30 for a game and give me artwork that looks like that. Give me artwork that looks good. And when I have artwork that looks good, it makes me want to play the game more. Yeah. So that's that's just the way it is. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. My number seven, funny enough, consistent graphic design, desi design and artwork. That was a mouthful. <laughs> consistent <laughs> graphic design and artwork. And what I mean by that, and again, I'm basically saying the same thing, but I, I, I'm specifically saying that the artwork in the piece, whether good or mediocre, if it's bad, it's bad, okay? But even if it's mediocre, I'd rather it be consistent than some of it be good and some of it be bad, okay? And my big example here, my big pet peeve, Dominion. Okay, hmm. there's cards in Dominion okay. that look good. Yeah. And there's some that are awful. And it kills me to have a hand with good artwork right next to, okay, artwork right next to really bad artwork. A game that is not consistent in the graphic design, where there are cards that this deck and this deck, you're holding a card from each and they don't look good together hmm. in your hand. Right. Or the artwork is all over the place. There's great artwork here and bad artwork on the cards. That, for me, drives me up the wall. So good, yes, but consistent especially. Just last night we played a, that, that trick-taking game, that ladder uh, trick-taking game, ladder climbing trick-taking game where the artwork made it more interesting than just yeah, regular. it did. And, and so that was cool. It was, what was it called? The Greatest Commander? Yeah, the of, Greatest Commander! The Greatest Military Commander or something like that. It was really cool. What do you think of Magic the Gathering? Because that has a lot of different artists. It does, and, and old Magic had a lot of bad art in it. But honestly, these days, it's fairly consistent. It's okay. really high. That's what I was thinking. They do, I mean, there's a lot of artists in these <laughs> there, sets. There but, are. But yeah, you're right. Some of those old magic, you're like... They're very huh. bad. Yeah, it's <laughs> old 90s artwork for CCGs was bad, mostly. But today, it's, it's very consistent. I think all the artists are more or less on the same page as to the feel. Mm. All right. So that works for me. Okay. Number six. Okay, once again, going to piggyback on something Tom said. It's components. I feel it. I feel nope, it. Nope, 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 nope. Dice combat. <laughs> oh, dice combat. <laughs> dice combat. I love dice combat. I can do without rolling dice uh, for resources, although I do enjoy resource management. I can do without rolling dice for resource. I'd rather be able to set up an engine that gives me the resource and I don't have to worry about, am I gonna get it or not? However, with dice combat, 
you always have, well, I guess you can go either way, but I, I, I guess I'm taking the higher road. And uh, you always have the hope oh. of winning. You always have the hope of winning. Even if you're outnumbered, you can roll dice. What are you doing? That was funny, the high road thing. Was yeah, I'm, I'm taking the high road. I'm not being a pessimist. But anyway, for once. Um, Excuse me, sir. <laughs> I have to roll my dice. I have beaten you. <laughs> Move with thy pieces. Old English. Never dice heard. combat is something that I really enjoy because you always have the hope of winning even when you're outnumbered. Granted, it probably won't happen, especially with me. Dice hate me, but I, I like them. So there you have it. Dice combat. That's funny, man. It's a one-sided relationship. <clears throat> yes, it is. Okay, Sam, we need to get off the same wavelength. Okay. Line number six, dice. I thought you were going to say get games with no dice. <laughs> <laughs> now, especially, for me, unique dice. Okay, dice that have, they're not just okay. pips, but something cool. So yeah. Sabers, oh, cool. and oh, that side has an axe, and that side has a, a guy's head, and I don't know. Okay, <laughs> cool dice with unique sides, unique features in the dice. I think that's just the coolest I thing. I completely agree. I open yeah, a lot of games cool. every week, and when I open the game and I see unique dice, it makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Even if the game is <laughs> terrible... There's those unique dice. There's just something about that opening it and going, ooh, I wonder what these do. It's not this. <laughs> I'm, you know? I'm so happy. So that's my number six dice, especially I, unique dice. I like unique dice that have more than six sides, mm -hmm. even. But those are there's, those are actually quite rare. They are. Most dice that have weird sides are, are six-sided. Mm -hmm. They very rarely do custom 20-sided dice mm -hmm. or whatever. Oh, that would be cool. That's why. Four. They but do, that's, that's expensive. Sometimes though, they do probably, four sides to little pyramids. Well, one of the reasons I like Formula D is it has custom. Yeah, they're uh, all numbers, but 30, they're so costly. Yeah, they're numbers, but they're weird numbers. They're right. Cool. Right. 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 All right, we're going on. Six. Six. <laughs> oh, I like this. Okay. I like a game that gives me a sense of exploration. By that it could be, we're going to turn tiles over, and as we turn them over, what's going to happen next? Aha! You go into the room, well, they're not necessarily a surprise, but, well, I mean, I guess it is a surprise, but no, not I, a surprise I get moment. what you're saying. It's exploring. It's that, that, that feeling of actually exploring. Oh, and I like that because it's neat, even if it's one-sided. Like, I like the set for this reason. Because you guys are the ones exploring. Right. I love the fact when you go into a room and it's like, oh, 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 you didn't expect to see three spiders there right. type thing. Right. I think that's cool. And I, you know, there's games like Carcassonne <laughs> as you turn them over. Ooh, where does this tile go? And it's cool because each game, you feel like you're going on a journey. And I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, I agree with you there. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't. Say I don't think enough games do it. Frankly, that's true. Yeah, I wouldn't say Carcassonne because you get to pick where it goes. I actually like the feel of. There being something there that's been determined before me, yeah, and you before have to I find ever open the box, find out what it is. It's not true. I set up the game, but that it's that like flipping it and going, it's a jungle. Yeah. There's snakes. You know what I mean? It's yeah. that feeling of we walk into a den. Well, of snakes. even ink and gold. Yes, even that. You're turning yeah. over one card at a time. It's like, oh, a troll. Oh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. What it feels like you're going deeper into the thing. I like yes. that idea. Snakes. So a sense of exploration. Why did it have to be snakes? All right, my number five is included reference sheets. If I open up the box and there's reference sheets, oh, I know my job is going to be so much easier yeah. teaching that game. Give everybody one. Okay, each turn, look at the front of that sheet. Da 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 da. I can knock it out quick. Yep. You know, it's one of the simplest things to include and one of the best things you can put in that box. And so many games still do not include even a rudimentary. A reference sheet. But there are some, I have some caveats with this. Uh huh. If you have to rip the reference sheet out of the book and cut it in half, Ooh. those I don't like. Yeah, no. There's one company in particular that does that. Um, um, I don't know who that also, is. Also, yeah. reference sheets that are oblique and just show a bunch of random symbols and you don't. <laughs> I've seen reference sheets right. like that where you get that people are like, I don't know what this means. Yeah, it's because you're trying to make it language independent and you're like, ah, right. oh, this is no help at all. Right. Yeah. right. So help, helpful, helpful <laughs> reference sheets. I just think that elevates a game for me. You know, if it comes with that, thumbs up. Right. So my number five reference sheets. All right. My number five is a game that has little to no downtime for me as a player. 
Mm-hmm. And I don't mean that the game itself has no downtime. I don't mean I have to be involved, but I need to be fascinated every single moment of the game. And I know some people out there might say that I'm ADD for thinking that way, but it, I don't... Your child. Well, no, but if I can get up and move away from the table when it's not my turn... I don't consider that as cool of a game. Yeah. yeah. I like a game where every moment, like, if Sam doesn't like, why'd you do that? Yeah. But there's so many games that I play these days where when the other people take their turns, You're doing I don't need to be there. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I, don't, I can totally check out because it doesn't affect me. And that doesn't mean that the game itself is bad. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is I like a game like, for example, in Battlestar Galactica, which we just played. Yeah. Every single turn, it's not your turn. But you're involved. Right. You're involved in some way. In Cosmic Encounter, I played games where I never got a turn. And I still... <laughs> well, it didn't turn out so well. But but I still was involved in every turn. On right. every turn in Cosmic Encounter, the, they, they say, does someone want to uh, join the Allies? Or, you know, you you are involved. And I really enjoy that. I, I don't want to sit there and be bored and say, oh, I wish they would take their turn. <laughs> you know, I'd rather a game where I'm just constantly involved. Yeah, we play games to where... Y- you could literally play a side game while you were playing the big game. Um, and it didn't really affect the other game at all. I remember I played a game once. I want to say it was a Middle Earth Quest. And the downtime was so long. At the end of my turn, I started to entertain myself timing my turn. It would go around the table and come back to me. 24 minutes to go <laughs> wow. for me to take another turn. Wow. Yeah, that happened with me one time with World of Warcraft, the the big game. The first one that Fantasy Flight did, the giant one. Mm-hmm. We actually did what Sam said. Mm-hmm. We played another game mm-hmm. while we were waiting mm-hmm. for the other team to take their turn. Were you on my team? Uh, you me no, I was against. Oh, but but either way, when, when mm-hmm. one of us was going, it was like 30-minute turns. Yeah. Wow. And it was like, all right, I guess I'll just play uh, checkers with this guy here while we're waiting. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, boo! Yeah, bad. Not not good. Uh, but I'm not here to talk about bad things. And say I'm I'm saying I like games that involve you the whole game. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. So no downtime. My number five, epic conflict. Conflict on an epic scale. Um, the more epic, the better. The well, again, <sighs> space is where it really shines for me. I knew, However, I knew Twilight and Pyramid. Yeah, it had it had to. Now I didn't mention don't, it. Don't you mentioned it. Don't say a word, Agricola. Just Do saying. Not say a word. Just saying. <laughs> Agricola is epic. But I mean, I also liked. I mean, I liked Warhammer 40k. Now it wasn't as epic as Epic Warhammer 40k. But uh, uh, we they had something the... called Epic Warhammer 40k. Yeah, they did. Where the pieces were like half the size of a regular piece, and you're. It's not you... epic. That's less epic. No, 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 then no, 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 you no, play no, no. Gigantic, huge. It was battles. like you were you were in charge of an entire. Yeah, we're army. totally ignoring your stupid joking. Not. No, I'm just like, oh, I thought smaller is less epic. No, you e- mean the battle's bigger. Yes, the the, the, the miniatures. Like one robot this tall versus another one. This the, the, okay. No, no, no. So you're saying that if I go out and fight my brother, that's more epic because I'm bigger than any game piece. No. That would be boring. You have no fighting <laughs> skills. Punch him in the throat! <laughs> okay, cool. So, epic. Yeah, epic. Um, epic conflict. Uh, I'm, I'm talking, of course, uh, Twilight Imperium 3. I'm talking uh, Command & Colors Ancients. I'm talking uh, not as epic, but uh, definitely the where you had a lot of forces on your side. Uh, original Battle Lord, you, you could have... There were some scenarios where you just... Your whole side of the board was filled with troops. Okay. And uh, that's, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, I mean, Memoir and Battle Lord are, are kind of more squad level size, I guess you could say. So... But that type of large-scale conflict, I love that kind of stuff. Um, especially when there's a lot of players. Two-player, nah, it's okay. But when we got five players and they're all commanding their huge armadas, come on, man, that's awesome. All you right. know what's funny? He said resource management and epic space, and he hates Eclipse, which has basically both those th- both of those things in spades. You know? Yeah. I guess that... Yeah! No, and I'll tell you why. It's because bad. no, no, listen. Is it because it's bad, Master. <laughs> no, it's not. I, I like Eclipse. I'm just saying that I think it fits the resource management fight. I never thought Eclipse was epic. Come on, you agree on this? Yes, I do. Eclipse does not feel epic. No, it doesn't. 
Okay. You it have feels a few it, ships. It feels like you have your little your little attack wing. Okay. Sorry, sorry for the pun, but you have your little attack wing and you're going out and fighting everybody else's little attack wing. Twilight Imperium, you take your armada and go after somebody else's armada. I'm not saying that makes it necessarily better or not. Well, he does. I do. <laughs> but I'm just saying it's not epic. Got All it. right. Cool. Moving on. Number four. All right, my number four. Structured negotiation, communication, trading, and card playing. Structured. Oh, what I mean by that is my word. Games How am I going to type that? You can pick structured terms. I structured know. stuff. Um, what I mean by that is games that have... You can trade anything for anything. Uh, you can play this card at any time. It says it on the card at any time. Like after you put the game away. At any time. <laughs> that, okay? So you say you don't like that. I don't like that. I like structured. Wow. Okay? What is, what is wrong with him? Holy overreaction, Batman. No structure. Good game. No. You remember the prototype we played? Oh, shit. That was no structure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that game has a lot more structure. Like phases. Okay, cool. You can play this during this phase. That's fine. Oh, I mean, literally, like, any like time. prototype, right? We could do anything anytime. That's right. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> communication with structure, you know, uh, if it's a communication game, obviously. Uh, trading, like, go, uh, is it good? No, Genoa. Traders of Genoa. It used to be called Traders of Genoa back when I played. Now it's Genoa. Back in the day when I played You can Genoa. trade, in that game, you can trade, like, anything for anything? Yes. It's awful. It's like, <laughs> the turns are 15 minutes. It's like, I'll trade you your turn for, uh, this card. I'll trade you a gummy bear for two flips of a die. I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> I don't like that, you know? Um... That's what I mean. So structured, card playing, negotiation, that sort of thing. All right, that well, is my number I'm four. I'm going to disagree with you a little bit on this. I, I, I understand that you want some structure to a game, but sometimes I like freeform stuff. You're saying you don't like pit? The problem is with freeform, for me, again, this is my, these are my things that I find the game has, and I'm like, cool. Or, you know, if it doesn't have them, like, uh, is that people, someone at the table is going to want to push a boundary where, like, your turn's about to end. I'm like, okay, I'm done. Ah, 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 I'm playing this card now. It's okay. like, dude, I just said I'm done. My turn is over. Yeah. You know what I mean? That. Mm -hmm. That I agree, but I think that's almost a player. We're going to do the top ten annoying players one of these days, and I think that's one of the guys, the guy who pushes every rule. Yeah. To that guy, limit. yeah, yeah. So, again, I like a game that doesn't allow for that dude to show up and be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. My number four. Again, picking backing on something that I believe Tom already said. But I'm going to go a step further. Plastic pieces. I like plastic pieces. I like having plastic pieces over wooden pieces. I want plastic three-dimensional pieces. And no, I'm not talking about Connect Four. Um, I'm talking about miniatures. I'm talking about ships. I'm talking about... Uh, Things that I can manipulate during my turn that help me get into the game just a little bit more. Plastic pieces. What about pewter? Um, pewter, I don't like as much. Mainly because, especially if I have to put that stupid thing together. <laughs> and it has a huge stinking arm and a little tiny shoulder. And no. you have to sit there and hold it yeah, you while to... watching a movie. Yes. Oh, I've never done for the, this. Yes. Okay, so, it. I mean, that's Warhammer. What a piece of felt you can stroke. 40K. Wow, why do you keep bringing that up? Between turns. Okay. Not the throat anywhere, but the throat, uh, Anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow. No, I understand that. But yeah. See, I, I disagree. That I think sometimes wood just works better. Mm. Well, for example, Settlers of Catan. They came out with a plastic version. Oh, I want the wood back. Right, right, right. No, but see... You're going to say Germany. Canton Geographies Germany, Germany has plastic that. in it, and it's much better. It's because of those extra buildings they built. If you take those extra buildings out and just use the... I, I, I would like, still like it. I would still like it over the wood. I like, I like the is, wood bits for some sometimes things. Sometimes plastic is, is cheap. There are some games that make cheap plastic. Understandably so. The stuff that, like, melts as you set it underneath a lamp. Right. Yeah, that <laughs> stuff. But I'm talking about, you know, harder, coarse, more coarse 
plastic, the stuff that stands on its own, the stuff that doesn't look like it had a V8, it didn't have a V8 this morning, you know, uh, it's like leaning over. But yeah, I'm not talking about that, kind of, but, but really I would rather have that over some nondescript wood stanchion. All right. Some outline, yeah. So your number four is... Plastic, plastic pieces. pieces. My number four is games that give each player a specific power, a specific special ability that that player has. No, that's that crazy. could be a game. He's gonna say it. He's gonna say oh, it. Oh, like don't. Battlestar Galactica. Okay. Where each player has their own special right, ability. Right, right, right. Okay, it right. could be a game like Cosmic Encounter, <laughs> where that's the whole. That's the whole feature of the game. It could be. No, look. There's a lot of games where we play it, and I'm like, wow. I wish each person had their own special power. Yeah. There's a lot of them, and like, and when they do add it to a game, like Alien Frontiers, I was like, oh wow, I got my own special power now. Um, you know, different things, like even um, the Nexus Ops add the extra powers in. No, no but they should have, because I thought that would make the game better. Yeah, like, that's just something I like in a game. Maybe, maybe the Fantasy Flight did. I don't know. The, the original didn't. But the I, I like when Pandemic each person has a role. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever everyone is asymmetric, no, not asymmetrical. Whenever everyone is symmetrical. Mm-hmm. It bugs me just a little. Okay. I, I like that it. was going to be my next question. Do they need to be symmetrical or asymmetrical powers? Well, well they, they cannot be symmetrical and be different powers. Right. They have to be different. Well, no, no, no. You I can don't, okay. Not uh, not not symmetrical. Not symmetrical. You I mean, mean equal. Balanced. Uh, I would say ninety-five percent of the time, yes. Sometimes, like in Cosmic Encounter, there's <laughs> player balancing. <laughs> oh, get over it. You like it too. <laughs> <laughs> but no, look, I, I like when a faction or a side has a special ability. In fact, I remember when we were first being told about, what's that game called? That, that, uh, Terra Mystica. That was the thing that drew me to it, the fact that each person had their own special ability. I want to play, uh, yeah, that's awesome. I want to check that out. We should check that out. Okay, come on. Just <laughs> Anyway, so my number four is Player Powers. <laughs> Number three. All right, my number three. It's getting good. I'm going to say this before anybody else has. <laughs> Cooperative games. Sam! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not on your list. Is it really? Okay. Not on your list. Really? No. Man, see? That's a lie. You no. love cooperative games. I know, like, right? No, 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 when no, I no, hear no, that a game like is... top 15. Will you shut up and let me talk? <sighs> Sorry, sorry. Actor okay. types. Always got to be saying something. Wow, you just... Okay, go ahead. Anyway. Oh, I'm just, I'm just on everyone. <laughs> I, uh, when, when I hear that a game is cooperative, it makes me want to play it better. And I know that the game is more often than not going to be well accepted with a group of new players. Yeah. Because we're not after each other's throats. We are helping each other beat the game. Uh, so I like cooperative games a lot. N uh, okay, stop. I don't like it better than all of these other kinds of games that are out there that have conflict and player interaction and all this other kind of stuff or, or player conflict. But I do, it's one of the things that I enjoy having in a game. And when the mechanics work well with, with that cooperative aspect, it just, it, it, it flows very well. So my number three is cooperative games. That's all right. cool. Yeah, I almost put that on my list actually, but, but I was going to say that it has to be cooperative completely or not cooperative. Because what I don't like is pseudo kind of help me and I might help you back cooperative right, games. We're not on this. We're not on things you don't like. Be quiet over there. All right, my number three. You're both now picking on me. What's okay, up? Okay, my number three is competitive I'll games. I'll stop. <laughs> Are you serious? No, I'm not serious. Um, my number three is games that seriously allow multiple strategies. Like I'm you not, have to be serious while you do it. You no, mean? I'm not. I'm, I'm talking about a game that allows you to do many different ways to victory. Okay. And not one of them is the obvious way, and even sometimes one is like we. I can say, oh, in this game, I'm going to try some weird thing, and this might, this just might work. Right. There's a lot of games that are very straightforward games, and sometimes those games are very good. <clears throat> you know, I don't have a problem with that, but I like a game that lets me. Listen, I'm going to try to get all the corn. You know, I mean, or... Well, okay, uh, now I'm going to say something yeah. that you guys are going to agree with. I'm, I'm going to mention the A word, okay? Agricola. But no. 
The A word. It is. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, listen. I like a grip. I don't care what these guys say. But listen, uh, the thing is with the grip club, Z mentioned this in the overrated games, and he said that pretty much when it comes down to the end of it, there's different ways to get about there, but you need to have some of everything. Mm -hmm. I like a game where that's not necessarily the, the case, mm -hmm. where I can say, I'm going to get a whole ton. And that's why I love Lahav. Because in Lahav, there's so many different. Co I can be the butcher of cattle. And that's the whole focus. Or I could be the shipper. I like games that allow you to do different things. Okay. I'm on with that. Okay. okay. I'm on board. And I mean, I think you guys do too, because when we do these things, we can say, oh, let me try this. I'm going to try sure. this, this turn and see what happens. This yeah. game and see what happens. Because I think that really gives a game replayability to me. Even if I think this strategy is inferior to another one, I might try it anyway just because it's more, it's interesting for me to do. Yeah. And that's what I was saying about that game. We were playing a few, a few, oh man, it's been almost two months ago now. Maybe more than that. What's he building in there? You felt like that was a straightforward path. Man, I, you, you had to do certain things. Okay, and and you just didn't have the ability to say, you know what, I don't want to do that over there. I want to try to do this over here. Right. And it's like the game was saying, no, you must do this over here. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Absolutely. All right, well, what's your number four? Okay, sir? my number three. Three. My number three is soft end game triggers. So what I mean by that is not a game that ends on the 12th turn. No matter what, the 12th turn. But if I find out the game has a has a variable end. So a card shuffled into the bottom 10. When it shows up, game's over. Uh, a roll of a die that, you know, on a 1, this turn, game's over. And hmm. On a 1 or a 2, next turn, the game's over. So hmm. it will end in 6 turns. Yeah. Or less. So that, a soft end game trigger. I love that in a game because it gives you a great end game tension. It's not, oh, there's one more turn. There's nothing I can do this turn. Uh, yeah, I'm done. That. That's oh, that's such a killer at the end of a game. You know? It's I love that feeling of I can't really do too much now, but next turn, if there is one. Oh, next turn, if there is one, I'm gonna kill. That, I love that, you know? Twilight Imperium 3 has that. Yeah? I'm as playing a, it. As a <laughs> No, you're not. As a <laughs> as a addendum to that, I think maybe for my number eleven I would put I like alternate victory conditions. Mm -hmm. Where like Oh, I'm gonna build all these resources, and then Z's like, "Oh, by the way, I just swept the board over here. Game over. I win." Right. You know, or or even just the the threat of that, like, right. "Oh, I'm winning, but man, if I let, you know, Liberté is a really good one. If you ever played the Mark Walls game, have you ever played Liberté? Mm -hmm. You don't like Liberté? Okay. <gasps> Must there be a moment in every video? Every yes. video. <laughs> if you bring up those kind of games, no, but okay, yes. I don't care what you think about Liberté. Liberté was a good game in the sense that you were trying to get victory points. Typical Martin Walls get victory. <laughs> It's a good a, game because you're trying to get victory points. Woo! But there was a possibility They're of getting VPs. Sir. Of getting Vips. a revolution would occur in the game, or a, revolution. a counter revolution would occur. Of a bunch and they of could little blocks in different ways. Right, I thought right, that was right, cool. Right, right, We're like interspersed that. around that the game, map. Um, what is that game? That fairly new game, Archipelago. Isn't that something like that? I yeah, there was played, a possibility for well, like there to be a loss or one person to win in that that's game. That's cool. Yeah, I like. I that. need anyway. to try that out. Sorry, I didn't mean to usurp your thing. Usurp, usurper. Number two. All right, top two. Here we go. Oh, oh, me. Number two, and I actually switched my number two and one back and forth, but I think I'm going to leave this as number two, is theme. Theme! Switch it. Switch I'm going to live forever. I love theme. Um, I, but I want a theme that is strong integrated into the game. Mm. This is an obvious thing. Anybody who watches my videos and they get on my case, uh, if you listen to the Dice Tower this past week, Jeff Engelstein was talking about Ludology, which is the name of his podcast. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about Ludology against Narratology, in which Ludology, Ludologists are people who think that the mechanics are more important, and Narratologists are more concerned about the narrative, the, the story of a game. I am definitely on that end of the spectrum. I want a good story. Don't get me wrong, I'll play abstract strategy games, I'll play Kenichi games. Oh, yeah, I just said the same thing twice. Um, but... <laughs> But I'll, I'll play those games. Who's the hater now? <laughs> I'll play those games, and I can enjoy those games. But if I can get into the theme, this is very similar to what Z said earlier. What did you say? What it lets you role play? Uh, the theme that lets you role play. It doesn't yeah, yeah. have to let me role play. I don't always have to say, you know, hey, here I am, a farmer and a Agricola. Uh, I'm going to get into every single one. <laughs> but there's no Okay, but listen. Theme? No, 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 no
listen, listen. Wow, holy uh, fangirl squeal, dude. That wasn't a squeal. I, I can do a squeal. Thor but... Rosenberg, wee! <laughs> now listen, you guys laugh, and people make fun of Agricola sometimes, like you two, all the time. And I like, but I'll tell you, the theme is strong in it. I don't care what you say. When you put the fences out and there's the pigs there, it has a strong theme there. The it's not like some games where we do things and we're one. like... Why did we do that? Sure. Why was that mechanic in the game? It doesn't make any sense. Even, um, there, there's sometimes I'll play a game and there'll be a mechanic in the game and you're like, uh, okay, whatever, that mechanic's in the yeah. game. Yeah, you know, sure. there's, there's no real reason for it. So anyhow. Okay, I will say, uh, you're not getting away with this. I will say that, okay, fine. I'll give you your theme card that you've played for Agricola. But I will also say this. It is the most Stupid theme out there. No, there's I, more themes. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Out of the popular games that are out there, I think a, a game about farming, of all things. Farming. Now, I'm not hating on farmers. Please, you give us food. Okay? I'm not saying that you are in unimportant. What I'm saying is I don't want to play a game. I don't care how themeful it is about farming. Yeah, but, but here's the deal, though. The... You you say that, but farming is something that people like to pretend to do, and then we know that no, okay, Ooh. yep. Every single kid when they're a little kid has a farm set. They have little chickens and cows, and they make the farm. And you know what I did with them? Then they turned three. I had battles with them. <laughs> My chicken army will rise. <laughs> No, but look, I'll tell you. Man, when I was a kid, I was Luke Skywalker, and my friend was Darth Vader, and I was going to kick his rear. I agree. I didn't walk around <laughs> pretending to be a farmer, but I'm saying the idea of... Hey, I have my little pitchfork. <laughs> the idea of running a farm is, a, is an interesting one. Maybe to you. To a lot of people. Okay, clearly, that's fine. Clearly to a lot of people. I, I don't agree with you care there. about this. I just, I'm just, you know, I just don't like that theme, are? and Sam obviously wants to punch people in the throat <laughs> when you that game. I do not. All right. Well, anyhow, I know you guys at least agree with my number two. That theme is a strong factor yes. in the game. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. We disagree on the actual specifics of the themes. Yes. All right, fine. All right. That's me? Yes. Yes. Okay, my number two is actually, I think you both have said this by now, and that is character powers. Yep. A game that has character powers. Roll selection. They can be, they can change. They can be role selection where they change mm -hmm. during the turn, right. or they can just be something you keep for the entire game. Right. I don't care. If there's characters in it, I'm in. Yep. It could even be bad characters. Like, I mean, a, a game that has, you know, you trade in a cube and you get two of these. That that's I, I don't like that. But you tell me that dude is a mason and that stone, cool. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? You tell me that that dude is a farmer and he's got some wheat. No, that game has a lot of other boring yes. things. But um. like Pillars of the Earth, the the trading things back and forth, it's not that, you know, it's not that interesting. But the theme, the fact that they are different, you know, people you're hiring. Gotcha. Yeah, that helps sell yeah, it to me. That helps. You know what I mean? There's the obvious ones. Citadels, Mission Red Planet, uh, Guildhall, right? All those games have characters. Mm -hmm. Guildhall's another good example because otherwise it'd be pretty abstract, you know? Yeah, it would. You could just have the power. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have I'm to be like confused. the maid. The... I'm kind of confused what your number two is here. First you said player powers, which is what I said where I'm a player and I have a power. But now you're saying that a card is a thematic. Those seem like two different things. No, it's characters. No, yeah, what he's saying is that it, it doesn't have to be as specific as I get but to choose same, a different role. Yeah, I don't it care can if it also moves be, or it doesn't move, right. but a character. It can also be a In character that you counter, have throughout the entire game. You are a character. So you like that, that's why you like that part of Domineer so much. Because there were so many cool different characters in the oh, game. Oh, Domineer. Uh, yes, I like that. That was Actually, the part yeah, you liked the, the best only, about yeah, the game. Yeah, the only part, yeah. Because you because you are appealing to characters. You're hiring characters. If the game has characters in it, I'm probably going to like at least that aspect of it. Right. Even on the very low end, Jamaica, you, ha it, you don't have powers, but the back of your cards, you are a character, uh, you are a pirate from history. If you had just been player red, player green, player yellow, which essentially that's what you are. Would well, you agree but, on that? No, that's a stretch. Those no, are well, I, that's why I said on the low so end. For you, it needs to be a mechanical difference besides... Uh, oh, yes. Okay, well, you didn't explain it that well, then. Yes, that's what I meant. Like, this character takes one cube of this and gives me one cube of that. Because the way you explained it, on the low end, what I'm saying about Jamaica does right. actually fit. On the low end. 
I'm so confused, but all right, what's your, what's your number two? My number two is worker placement. Worker placement game. Ricola. I will. It returns. Oh my it word. Has risen no. From the now man. look, look. Now I'm not saying Agricola. Now is there worker placement in Agricola? Yes. Does, does that mean that I have to like Agricola? No, it doesn't. <laughs> um, <clears throat> worker placement is a thing that I like. Now again, you, for any of these things. For example, if you had too much theme, and not enough game to go with the theme, you're gonna like the game. The right answer is no. Come on, man. Let's Seriously. Oh, man. Think ah. about it. If you have a whole gob of theme and no game to go with it, are you going to like the game? Probably not. There's exceptions, I understand. I'll, yeah. let you, I'll let you weasel out of it. But you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Worker placement, just because I like the mechanic, doesn't mean that I'm going to like every game that has that mechanic. Okay, that's fine. Right, that's, that's, okay. that's obvious. Right. So anyway, it is a game that I really do enjoy. And uh, I've had a lot of fun with worker placement, so it's my number two. If you make a worker placement game, there's a good chance that I'm going to like it. Cool. Here we go. And finally, number one. Is your number one pandemic? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, just check. I will mention it. It can make you feel better. All right, my number one is a feel of progression, a story that develops. Okay, a game that isn't the same at the beginning pandemic. as at the end. Sure, pandemic, but like, you know, <laughs> most other games. I mean, most other good games, I should say. So you're saying the same, like, you don't you don't want a game that does phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, phase five, uh, round round five rounds, and each round is the exact same. Right, like a game that goes, da-da-da-da, reset, da da It's like, no, I want progression. I want to look at the board in the end and go, I... Built this. I did something. You know what I mean? That. A sense of story. An arc. Okay, if a game gives me a good story, a good sense of progression, I'll probably like it. If it's something that feels fragmented, feels like little moments, you know, I can't look at the end and go, yeah, this is clearly different from at the beginning, mm -hmm. that, that loses me. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Sense of story. Okay. Number one. All right. My number one. Well, wait. Did you want to disagree or agree with that? No, I'm good. 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 That's You're a good, good one. Okay, I'm 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 good too. Um, actually, my number one actually kind of plays into that a little bit, but not really. Um, my number one is historical flavor, and what I mean by historical flavor is not not Twilight necessarily. Imperium three. No, not oh, Twilight Imperium. Historical flavor. Star oh my Wars word. History. Many years ago in a galaxy far. far That's Star Wars. Okay. That's not Twilight Imperium 3. <laughs> anyway, um, what I'm talking about, though, is games like Manhattan Project, where there is a definite historical undercurrent mm -hmm. to it. Um, games like Memoir 44, where you're enacting, you're, you're carrying out these different battles from history. Uh, games like... Pirate vs. Dinosaur. Age of Empires 3 has a strong historical... Yeah, all yes. of these things. Yes. Yes. These are games that I grab gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. If it has a strong historical theme, unless it's boring as all get out, I will probably like it. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, that's a good one. I'm just kind of surprised that that's your number one. Yeah. No, I, 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 I yeah, really, too. I've, I've thought about all the games that I've really enjoyed over the, over the years and the ones that have the historical flavor to them, I, I, I remember them more. I remember the plays more. So I, I don't know. I just I think that's out of the out of the choices that I had here. I uh, it was the one that rose to the surface. All right, my number one was pretty easy. Like I said, I waffled between it and theme because I love theme so much. My number one is combinations and variations. I love when a game can be played two hundred billion different ways. Mm -hmm. So I love Duel of Ages two, for example, because you will never play the same game twice. There's like three hundred characters and you use eight. Hmm. You know, um, Cosmic Encounter. We will never play every combination of aliens. It is literally impossible to do so. We, we, uh, so we actually could. I don't think you know what the word no, no, no. really means. Yeah, and, or impossible. <clears throat> because you could actually play every single combination that there is. Okay. It would take you forever. I'm just saying no, the trouble of but the you be dead. It it is, no, I am not using the word literally incorrectly. You literally can't. There's, there's billions. We can't play billions of games. We don't not even lie for billions of seconds. No, I'm what right. You, literally, you literally, literally, like you literally. Yes, what are we, who literally could play them? I thought are you meant like, like it could literally not be done. 
It can't be by any human being. They will die before they can play them off. If you had a group of human beings, you definitely could. <laughs> no! Okay, keep going, man. Okay. No, you could. No, you couldn't. <laughs> if I had, if I, oh, let's say a, I'm the president, I'm the president here. of Russia, Everybody, <laughs> role play, every, role play. Uh, everybody in Mother Russia will play Cosmic Encounter every moment of their lives da. until we have reached and played every single combination that there is. But I'm saying That's it's, done, yeah. it's still, <laughs> it's still is not possible in that situation because when you mix in the flares, but whatever. Okay. No, but I got what you're saying. Combinations is that feel of, man, I will I never do. exhaust this game. I love Summoner Wars for that same reason because mm -hmm. there's like 16 different armies and 16 times 15 different combinations and now they got mercenaries match it together and you guys bag on me because you think I'm like falling into the trap of it. You are. Uh, I'm not. I'm just buying starter deck. You bought another starter deck, didn't you? A five. Yeah, <laughs> see? <laughs> yeah. No, but listen, yeah, but nice I, I like the Magic the Gathering because... You'll never, there's so many different combinations. Yes. And you have to admit, you like collectible card games for that same reason. Uh, Star Wars, there was so many different combinations of decks that you Yes, could that's true. However, price, I'm sorry. You okay. I couldn't keep up with it. But that's the cool thing. I love buying a board game that has all those combinations. Yeah. I'll even mention your, your, your favorite one, the Twilight Imperium one, because there's so many different aliens now in it, whether the expansion, so many different combinations, different mm -hmm. ways to do technology. Yeah. I'm going to say it Brooklyn, because there's like 700 different card combinations. Can you mention Pandemic, sir? No. <laughs> just with Pandemic, there isn't those millions of combinations. <laughs> no, but look, that's, if you look at, when we do our top 100, when I do my top 100, you guys bag on me for that. I'm not going to, yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But in my, I looked at my top 20, 30 games, and almost every single one of them has this huge variety of games. I love yeah. that. I love going into a game, and even if you played it 50 times... I still have a chance because you don't know what the combination is going to be this time. Right. And you can't say them all. See, chess, to me, is the epitome of boring game design because you're always playing the same black army against the same white army. Mm -hmm. It's always the same, you know, going up against each other. There's not like, ooh, this time I brought the rook that can move forward. That's why I like those alternatives. That's why I like the duke and that deck-building chess game. I right, like right, those right. because they add that variety to the game. Anyhow. Variety, huge deal for me. Okay. Cool. So that's it. We're done. Those <laughs> things that for games, hopefully that will give you a look in the future. Um, I, I hope that, you know, with all of our joking aside and our mocking each other and making fun, really, though, I want to make it clear from the Dice Tower, from an editorial point of view, you can play anything you want. I never look down on other people for liking games. In, in, our, in our gaming group that we go to, once a month we go up to um, cool stuff in Hollywood... And we play there, and we usually get together and play games with some guys who like the same kind of games we do. Yeah. And there's there's a group of guys there who play Hollywood heavy Euro game. Hollywood, Florida. Hollywood, Florida. Florida. Yeah. Yeah. We're playing with the actors. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's a bunch of guys there who play really heavy Euro games. Yep. And yeah. that's fine. They en they enjoy the mess they, out they of them too. They love that, and it's just a different scene. So you know, they played a full game of diplomacy this past week. Yeah. I, I was afraid to go near the table. Not on the side. <laughs> yeah, I always make sure to say that, you know, just because I don't like a game that you like doesn't mean I don't like you, you know? Yeah, I'm not really, on really you. Mean no, that. absolutely we'll, not. We'll mock your games till the cows no, come no, home, no. Yeah. but we're never mocking you. No, no, yeah. And I'm getting tired of having to say that. <laughs> well, you know what is interesting? We are a bunch of nice guys. <laughs> Out of the top two on all of our lists, theme was somehow involved in everybody's top two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, we believe in that. And we have a lot of guys in our gaming group who, fortunately, that's not a hard thing to find. Right. But we have multiple people in our gaming group who like the same thing. Absolutely. Cool. So, that's it. We will see you guys next time. Until then, I'm Tom Basil. I'm Z Garcia. And I'm Slamming Sammy.
Game board. Game board. Board. Game board. 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 Game board.